Good evening. Welcome to the Thursday night, end of February edition of A Scale Canadian TV. The mountain is not out. Today's sponsor is the Omni Consumer Products. For all your Robocop needs, or all robot needs, call Omni Consumer Products. Disclaimer, if our robot kills you, it's not our fault. Don't sue us. It's somebody else's fault. It's probably like Stark Industries' fault or something. Don't, don't, don't come after us. Anyway, uh, welcome to a Scale Canadian TV. Um, tonight, we have all kinds of stuff. Uh, not a huge amount of modeling going on, but certainly a huge amount of wallet breaking going on. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, one thing that has been brought to my attention that I don't do a good job about is mentioning that I have a blog. And you might be saying, well, Jim, what's the address for the blog? Well, it's a scalecanadian.com. So if you would like to see words or just like it, looking at pictures of, you know, the tie-dye shirt, go to scalecanadian.com. Um, what's been going on? Well, we do have a little bit of modeling and I should have put this together before I did, but I've been working on the Airfix Cromwell tank. So we'll sort of put it together here. It's just about ready to paint. The one thing that it needs a little bit of work yeah, don't talk and not look at the camera. Uh, is the barrel. So that needs to be cleaned up a little bit. I'm trying to put it in place to show you. And this is going to be, there we go. And this is going to be a Cromwell. We didn't need that barrel. A Cromwell used by the British in uh, Korea. So that's kind of cool. I heard about it on the plastic, uh, I think it was Plastic Model Mojo. But it might have been... Plastic Potty Posse podcast, but somebody was talking about a Cromwell in Korea, and I'm like, oh, I got a Cromwell. That's cool. Let's build that. So it's 176. That's about my only complaint with this kit. I have not uh, put the wheels on yet. I'm pretty much ready to paint. So I need to put a few small parts on the hull, a few small parts on the turret. I need to clean up the barrel, which I'm going to go get right now. So I'll be back. All right, barrel is back. Uh, and that's moving along well. It's got these funky one-piece treads, which I uh, primed with some mahogany Mr. Surfacer. And I'm going to uh, do that again, sand it, clean them up, put a little more Mr. Surfacer on there. And uh, I'm enjoying it. These are weird, these are funky. Like yeah, Those are not rubber band tracks, that is an injection molded piece. And we've all seen the ones with everything in there, but that's just a tread, so that's cool. Uh, Spitfire is pretty much assembled. I got to sand down the wing roots. I have been spending a lot of time trying to decide what's the best thing to do with this Spitfire. I wish the kit would become available in America so I don't have to pay big bucks because this will probably become Desert Air Force 417 Squadron, but there's also a big part of me that wants to do a Malta Spitfire. And uh, we'll talk about something that came this week that uh, was big fun. Mosquito. Uh, Mosquito had some problems. I think I probably showed you a painted cockpit before. I tried out the uh, Roy Sutherland wash, which is basically a uh, future couple drops of black and brown Tamiya paint and water. And it just really messed it up. So I ended up stripping that off. Negative model progress. Um and I'm working on getting it back together. I am way behind on this. I wish the fuselages were together, or the fuselage was together, because it's only got one. It's not a twin mosquito. Uh, but I haven't been spending as much time on the bench as I should, and we got a follow-up uh, with the group build tomorrow night. So, uh, and unfortunately I'm in court a couple times tomorrow, so I would love to just blow off Friday and uh, work on that, but uh, can't do that. So, uh, Oh, we forgot modeling fluid. Oh, no. Tonight's modeling fluid, Black Raven Pilsner from Black Raven Brewing on the east side of Seattle. I want to say they're Bellevue, but they might actually be Kirkland or something. But really good. Enjoying this. Can't forget the modeling fluid. Uh, other than that, not a whole lot of modeling going on at the Tacoma or Taco Man. I'm unclear. Plastic model penthouse but a whole bunch of cool stuff has showed up. And we'll start with the first and scariest. One of Canada's uh, greatest military disasters, not named Hong Kong, uh, was Dieppe. 
And Scott Gentry was kind enough to send me a Churchill Mark III in 135th scale. That will eventually be from DM. And nobody cares about inbox reviews, but there is a problem here. There are lots and lots and lots of sprues. Now I see why I build tiny tanks. But this looks like a nice kit. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, it's got a metal barrel. It's got replacement tracks. And I'm not really sure where they came from. And I'm not really sure if I have instructions for those either. But very excited to get this probably later in the year. I think this is a fall winter project. Uh, other than that, the other things that came after a very, very, very long wait. It's not the manufacturer's fault. It's Canada Post is I got some of the Goodman sanding blocks. And 80 grit, doubt I'll ever use this one. But I've long looked for the perfect flat sanding because these sponges and the sticks we use do slightly curve to the surface. So sometimes you want something to be completely flat. I've gotten these, as you can see, I've been using them out. I like them. Uh, the other ones I had are these flat kind of T-squares from Suji Burrito. They're smaller, the middle is nice and flat, but they do kind of curve out at the end. But these are pretty wicked. Um, I did get them from Mr. Goodman at Good Goodman Model Industries. They took forever, um, but I think that's Canada Post. And what somebody had said is, uh, I think there's some issues with one of their transit centers or something, had a COVID outbreak and uh, it slowed down mail. So had to be patient, but worth the wait. So that was cool. The next thing that showed up, was, what do we want to talk about next? Let's talk about um, the great modeler, Jeff Groves, AK Inch High, who did some casts of some regular turrets for the Airfix B-17. And I asked if he'd cast me a couple and he did. And that's really kind and thank you, Jeff. But then he went above and beyond. I also got resin deck surfaces, one of which is a US Navy deck. Hmm, Jim. Wouldn't that look good? And I don't know which if, which one's Japanese and which one's uh, American yet. Wouldn't it look good to put a Wasp Spitfire in a U.S. carrier deck? Yes, it would. Problem is, this is probably going to be desert, so this is why I'm waffling. But one of these will absolutely be used for a uh, Malta Spitfire sometime in the not-too-distant future. But the other stuff is what was really cool. He had sent me some 3D printed armored cars. Hold on one second. This is the Fox armored car. And this thing is really cool. It's 170 second scale, give or take. Um, it is all 3D printed. There's a little bit of striation, but not much. Like this is way better than anything I've ever got from Shapeways. And this is called the Canadian Fox armored car, which I guess is a modified Humber. Uh, built in my hometown of Oshawa. So I was very excited about that. I don't think there's another one of these in 172. Uh, so that will be so much fun to play around with. He also stuck in an Otter armored car, also built in Oshawa. Uh, this is a little less rare. There's a really nice IBG kit with a ton of parts. This one doesn't have a ton of parts, probably get built first, in two little bags. Stormtroopers. And I was confused at first what the Stormtroopers were about because they seemed to be sitting down. Some of them seemed to be having their lunch. And Jeff said, well, remember that big picture from the 30s of the guys eating their lunch on the, uh, on the a girder above New York City? You can do that with Stormtroopers now. And I thought that was cool. So next time I'm at the hobby shop, I am going to have to get myself some uh, girder beams because that would be totally cool to have some Stormtroopers on um, on the thing. My question is, is it a good idea to hire stormtroopers as welders because they can't hit anything with their phasers? Are they gonna even be able to weld these things together? I don't know. But thank you so much, Jeff. It was a fun box to get in the mail, uh, full of neat stuff that I didn't expect, and that's the best thing. And that brings me up uh, to do a, a plug for uh, Jeff's blog, which is one of the better modeling blogs out there called Inch High Guy. Uh, it has a lot of 170 second scale stuff because he's another fellow 170 second scale modeler. He's got tanks, he's got airplanes, he's got other things. So it's well worth checking out, highly recommended. Other than that, um, not been listening to much music. 
uh, not sure why, but I have been reading a book and it is called Indestructible by John Brunning. It is about Pappy Gun, so don't ex be surprised to see a B25 on my uh, on my desk because, you know, as we've talked about, ADD, squ what, squirrel, where, where? Oh, he's over there. Um, Pappy Gun was one of the guys who hooked up a bunch of B25s and A20s with uh, a bunch of cannons in the nose, or guns in the nose, I guess they were machine guns, to go straight to the Japanese, and I'm really enjoying the book. I read uh, John's Race of Aces last year about P-38s and P-47s in the Pacific. This one's a little bit older. I guess I missed it just because it's got a red Beach 18 instead of a B-25, uh, but I'm really enjoying it, like the way he writes stuff, and uh, well recommend it. Uh, no music to talk about today. Uh, there tomorrow, there is music coming tomorrow, uh, tomorrow the Black Crows are going to release their first record, Shake Your Money Maker, with some bonus stuff and a live concert. Looking forward to getting my hands on that. But some other big news of the week, I uh, recorded with the boys from Kentucky for Plastic Model Mojo, which will be dropping first thing tomorrow morning, which means 9 o'clock here in... Uh, in uh, the Pacific Northwest or the People's Republic of Washington, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that will be dropping tomorrow. So get your podcast listening ears on and check out uh, Dave, Mike, and I talking about squirrels and rabbit holes. And, you know, I've six, started six projects since I started doing this video. Uh, other thing to promote is the most recent issue of Plastic po uh, Posse podcast came out last week, I think. Another great issue from Scott and the boys. Uh, I would love to say I remember exactly what it was about. I, oh man, I don't even remember. I, I, I got to write that down, but it was a great episode. I enjoy them. And then the other thing I want to plug is Model Airplane Maker. Um, Mr. Wallace has got a great video, much better than Random Talking Heads, about his take on black basing and painting. Um, well worth a watch as well as his other videos are. He does... Uh, really great models. He's working on an AH-24 uh, Hind, which is cool, but uh, check out his videos. They have production qualities, unlike us here at the uh, Plastic Model Penthouse, where we have no production qualities. Last but not least uh, is something else new that didn't come by mail, but came from Dr. Mr. Model Paint, Dr. Strangebrush, John Miller himself, a David 3000 drill. And I have not got around to playing with it yet, but all the friends who have one love them. Um, I will do a video on this in the near future. I've got an old Dremel. It's like one of the little blue ones. This is smaller, cooler, and I'm looking forward to playing with it. So um, I'm going to try to do better. I always say I need to do these quicker. I need to do these more often. Uh, I would apologize, but you know, you don't care. You know, uh, it's just been a lot of work. And uh, that's a good thing. I'm really glad work is taking off, but sometimes it stands in the way of focusing. And really my modeling problem has less to do with time other than not using my time appropriately. So what I'm going to try to do, I don't even, oh, it's way over here. I am going to try just to make David Knights happy to finish this Spitfire before I see you next time. All I gotta do is paint and mask the canopy, do the propeller, put on the landing gear, Oh, fill the camera holes, and we're done. Why is this not done? I don't know. Well, I know. Squirrel. Oh, wow. Um, but I got to get that done. Other than that, uh, everybody stay safe. And uh, we had a snow Mageddon in Tacoma, and uh, it was crazy. There was a dusting of snow, and people were crashing into buildings and accidents everywhere. And then the next day they closed the uh, hill next to me and everybody was tobogganing down it. And then by Monday it was raining and it was all over. So take care, um, model on A, and uh, listen to uh, me and Dave and Mike yammering on about squirrels and other things on the uh, Plastic Mojo, no, Plastic Mojo podcast. Yes, they all have the same names. It's so hard. Um, I don't blame them. And uh, once again, thank you, Jeff, for the Churchill. Sorry, thank you, Jeff, for all the resin and uh, uh, 3D printed stuff. And thank you, Scott, for the Churchill. Everybody have a great weekend. I am out.